Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Adobe Noli. Coming to your life on City of Abuja, Nigeria. How are we all doing? How are we staying safe? Yes, for those of us who are going out, please remember to do the right thing. Wear your face masks and wash your hands regularly. So, I'm... Well, so... I'm very sorry for what happened last week. I know you could not see much of my videos last week. That was because YouTube was just taking down my videos. They just took down my videos and each time I appeal, they put it back. I appeal again. It was just back and forth, back and forth. So that's why I couldn't really put out much videos last week. And sorry again for not reviewing Skinny Girls in Transit. The finale, I know so many of you were watching out or were looking out for that um, review. I'm sorry about that. So this particular video, I'm going to review a little about it. So as I told you last week, um, I introduced something new, which is called social issues. So last week was social issues one, which YouTube was just doing anyhow, anyhow. So today on social issues, episode two i'm going to be talking about the ease on the lockdown i'm sure most of you have seen the videos that have been going around i'm going to insert some of the videos that have been going around and you now wonder what was even the essence of the one month lockdown if i may ask like what was the essence of the lockdown because it's not like the number was coming down it's just not like the curve I think that's what they call it. Not like the curve had flattened as to say, okay, let's just ease this lockdown. The numbers kept increasing, not like they were increasing in double. They were increasing triple, 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 triple. Like, and I've noticed some, somewhere like Abuja, the figures were not just consistent. Today you're having six, tomorrow you're having 12, next tomorrow you're having, like, it wasn't just consistent. And some days again, you're not even having any, any case at all. So I personally, I feel ncdc why giving this result i feel they should actually insert like six people were tested and so and so number tested positive i feel that is what they should do sha i don't know i'm just saying i feel that is what they do so that people will be able to know okay the state of what's happening because you know you cannot just come and tell us you have six cases today and if i'm imagining okay you have six cases today did you did you did you test 1000 people or did you just test six people and then the six people came out and positive at least that will give us an idea of what or the state of this virus in this country that is what i feel so going back to um the ease on the lockdown from the videos i saw i'm now wondering what was actually the essence of this lockdown if i may ask see crowd no form of social distancing like no form of social distancing. you go to the bank it's as if they were saying oh if you come to the bank today we'll dash you money or whatever what are people really doing in the bank and what is even annoying me the most is that young people are seen in that bank Okay, for elderly people, I can understand because I know elderly people, most of them are not just, have refused to actually adjust to the um, e-banking thing. So most of them are still, no, they don't trust it, they don't, and all of that. I'm not trying to excuse them, but if you ask so many elderly people, they will tell you, no, they don't trust e-banking and all of that. So my problem is, what are the young ones doing in the bank? That is on Monday, that was yesterday. What were they doing in the bank? I don't understand. What are you doing in the bank? If your ATMs were seized, what stops you from waiting like waiting a little bit you've waited for one month you did not die or if you're saying okay you don't have money what you could have just done is i'm guessing you have a mobile you can do mobile transfer transfer it to somebody around you and then go out later on tell the person to withdraw for you you're seeing that crowd well basically if it was me even if i had any issues to do with the bank even if it was um errors in my transfer or my atm was seized or i missed i misplaced my atm what i would have done is Get into that bank and I'm seeing that crowd there. I will just go back. If I needed money so badly, I'll either transfer money to somebody's account and beg the person to help me withdraw money. Even if the person wants to charge me maybe 100 naira for the withdrawal, no problem. Withdraw and give me my money. I see that is better for me, that is safer for me, and all of that. Then you now go to um the um, public transport. Okay, let me not even let me let me continue with the banking aspect. Then why did the banks just open one one branch? You know, this is the first day after one month, and you're just opening one branch. And I, just, I don't understand why that should be. I don't understand why that should be. The crowd was just too much. And I don't, I just, I don't understand. I think the whole essence of the lockdown was defeated. Then when it comes to um, public transport, public transport, they, not like they even observed the rules of, um, they, I think they said three passengers in front. No, four passengers in front, right? One driver, then the passenger, and then two passengers at the back. Not like it was even observed. You could still see so many crowded vehicles like so many um, so many people in vehicles and i'm now wondering what is happening like 
this government really want us to die like i feel this government all they just did was okay oh she people are complaining and i cannot just supply you people with anything i cannot provide your needs you should just go out there fend for yourself kill yourself if you want to die and all of that and the funny thing is that some people would not want to go out some people would not want to go out on it on a normal basis but because of the kind of bosses they have because of the kind of workplaces they have and if you don't go to the office you're either sacked we all know what's happening in nigeria people are losing their jobs day in day out so you can imagine um you you don't want to go out because okay you just feel i maybe i have enough to take care of myself pending how long this will take but the office is saying you need to resume work today you cannot start challenging your office. If you want to challenge them, you're losing your job. We all know that jobs these days are not forthcoming anyway. So it's really a problem that the government has actually sent us or told, told us to just, just go and die. They just said, go and die. That is just what they did to us. And it's really unfair that we are in such a mess like this. Then um, when it comes to the marketplaces, when you say social distancing, see, I went to the market, which day was that? Sometime last week, yeah? And there was no form of social distancing. Like, do you know I stood at a particular point for more than five minutes because I could not pass. Not like you could go back or you could go front or you could go side. None of that. The wheelbarrow guys just blocked everywhere. Every shows people were just touching, touching themselves. Like when I came back, hey, good. When I came back, I shots. Let me just stop. Let me just let me not even go for that. So this whole social distancing thing is just to me. It's just it's just crap because nobody's observing it even when you want to observe it but because of the society the type of society you live in you cannot just observe it for you to observe it you just have to be in your house like you should it's better you just go to one island and stay in nigeria it is not working out at all it's not just working and it's only god that will help us when it comes to this virus because it's terrible so moving on to the second social issue i have today I have it has to do with abacha's loot as we all know the federal government has received 311 million dollars of abacha's loot like so i saw someone's tweet the person was like this is the kind of sugar daddy one needs even if he's not available you're still sure of getting a lot like how many years ago did this man die and we keep getting or recovering his loot day by day i'm not understanding like how is this even possible that someone loot head this country and we are still alive that means this country is really rich like we are very rich in this country you mean like see <laughs> oh god like this guy has been has looted so much that every year we are sure of receiving something from him is that not wonderful is that not wonderful 311 million dollars is what is what was recovered from his loot part of his loot so we are still expecting more right is he not just a, a, a good a good ex-president like even in debt he's still sending us money but some people are saying that most of this money in quotes is not true and my question is how is it not true eh? how is it not true the government is all the um, i think this money is coming from us or wherever he's saying that this is part of abacha's loot and people are saying it's not true well that is your case to judge but i'm talking based on what the federal government of nigeria has said federal government of nigeria has said they received a sum of 311 million dollars from abacha's loot which is i think it's coming at the right time when nigerians need money basically so um i'll have to say now that since this money has come like this is not the first time we are going to recover such amount of money. I feel the government at this point in time should at least invest that money into something. Even if it means building one hospital. Doing something that will be beneficial to everybody. So $311 million, not $311 million. $311 million can do a whole lot. Can build a standard hospital. Like, yes, it can. So I just, I wish the government would watch this and please utilize make good use of that money like it shouldn't just go as it has always been i feel they should make good use of this money at this point in time so my third issue is um congrats to messi johnson who has put to bed in um u.s i'm guessing it's u.s to a baby girl this is her fourth child so congrats to her then let me now go to um, my fourth issue which is the skinny girls in transit it's not really an issue but let me just talk about it first and foremost kudos to 
the producers, the director, the cast, and all of that of Skinny Girls in Transit. People did a marvelous job. People really did a marvelous job. Like, people proved people were beyond ordinary. Yeah, congrats to all of you. So, first. I have to say thumbs up to Shalewa. Like I wasn't expecting what Shalewa did. Like that move was oh girl, oh girl. I wasn't expecting that move at all. And so congrats to Shalewa. Although I feel she shouldn't have gone to his house to challenge him because he could have done anything to her. Like when his fist was just so, I was like, oh Shalewa, you're dead now. But thank God he respected himself and he did not do anything to Shalewa. So you know the other um pre in the previous was it in the previous or was it this particular episode well ay mistakenly sent out the video and i'm happy now that mommy tiwa will be now with her youtube channel i'm guessing we'll see more of mommy tiwa being more productive not yeah more productive not just the mother that sits at home and all of that i i'm guessing that if there'll be a season seven i'm guessing that mommy tiwa might be the spotlight for LM season 7. Then congrats to Didi and Editi. Yes, Didi is now has been proposed to and which I'm very happy about because you know in previous seasons <laughs> Didi was just here and there. She was just scattered everywhere. But now at least I'm happy that she's settling down. She's settling down for someone she loves basically. Then congrats again to Tiwa and Midi for their baby. They're expecting their baby and I'm guessing it's going to turn out well as usual. Yes, yeah, so what again that my name is now? What again name is then Shalewa Mohammed? I don't know, Sha. I'm just kind of here and there. Yes, the two of them have messed up, but them reconciling, I think it just has to do with how they feel for each other. If they still feel okay, oh yes, they can still take it to the next level. Fine and good, but I don't know. If you know this thing called relationship is somehow like it's somehow when your emotions are involved, it's somehow so whatever they want to give to us. If there'll be a season seven, then that will be fine. That'll be perfectly fine. But what do you think? Would there be a season seven? I wish there'll be a season seven, but that's left to them to actually decide if there'll be. Because I've been bother Greg, which is Tiwa, when she did her life that same day, she was saying she's not sure there'll be a season seven, but it was not really in her hands to decide if there'll be a season seven or all of that. But whatever it is, no problem. We'll be expecting it. Even if it don't come, no problem. You guys did a wonderful job. So what again am I missing? I don't think I'm missing any other thing. Well, I'll draw the cutting for here. But I hope I'll be consistent this week. Like, yes, I have, I think I have time now in my hands compared to last week. I hope I'll be consistent this week. Thank you once again for watching my videos. Yes. Please kindly subscribe once again and click that bell button below. See you next time. Bye.